big star out of me. Make a film about a man who's sad and lonely. And all I gotta do is act naturally. Well, I'll bet you I'm gonna be a big star. Might win an Oscar, you can never tell. The movie's gonna make me a big star. Hello and welcome to Meet Me at the Movies. I am Noel T. Manning II. So glad that you guys could spend some time with us. Uh, joined by Mr. Tim Foster. Uh, Tim, you know, you're going to be speaking quite a bit this show. Uh, normally, you just kind of sit and nod and smile and, and make yeah. crazy gestures, but you're actually going to be speaking some this yeah, show. What's wrong with everybody <laughs> in the world? I mean, yeah, we're talking sports so occasionally. You know, I get to jump in on that. But no, thanks for having me, Noel. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the topic is sports, uh, and it is a, a new documentary uh, that uh, Christian Jessup uh, has directed, put together, and he's wrangled in Thomas Manning to, to be a part of it. And I'll let you guys both talk about your roles, but the documentary does have some local connections as well. Uh, it focuses on the, uh, the run, uh, the Gardner Webb University uh, Running Bulldogs Run, let me get that right, Running Bulldogs Run to the big dance uh, just a, golly, a, a year and a half ago, I guess. It's uh, pretty amazing, but you guys followed the entire uh, journey from those early games, actually even going back to the hiring of Coach Tim Kraft, and uh, we'll talk about that as well, but you covered everything all the way through uh, the, the, the team coming home after that, uh, that they suffered that loss to Virginia, but uh, happy to have you here and uh, looking forward to hearing you talk a little bit about uh, about this documentary. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good to see both of you. You know, I was on the show for a little bit, and I don't know that I ever heard Tim get to speak. So it's a <laughs> rare occasion. Glad to be a part of it. Christian, it's, it's just an honor. And I muted you a lot, Christian, during your day at home. So, I mean, it, it all evens out in the end, right? Good to see you, my friend. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right. Well, well, Christian, let's. I want to dive in with the first question and, and get you to talk about where the idea for this came from and how did it blossom into more than just an idea? Yeah, so I, I've heard a phrase that said all the best ideas are borrowed. Um, and, and that certainly rings true here. So I remember watching ESPN's The Last Dance documentary series. Um, and I was really into that. You know, that was a little bit before my time, the events that took place following Michael Jordan's NBA Finals run. But, you know, it was so well made and the feelings that it kind of conjured, like the triumph, the like you're rooting for him. And even though obviously the events of the documentary had already taken place, it was made in such a way that you really felt a lot of like drama and you're sitting here rooting for events that happened 20 years ago. And the, the closest feeling I had watching the Last Dance documentary was the feelings I had being in Raleigh watching Gardner Webb on TV first win the Big South Championship and then then participate in the NCAA tournament. Um, and so that kind of sparked the idea of, you know, like I'd love to make a video about Gardner Webb's run. Um, and Thomas can tell you when I first texted him about it, it was like, you know, what if we did like a little five minute tribute? And then it was like, <laughs> well, you know, maybe we can stretch it out to a 10 minute tribute. And then somehow along the way, I, I roped Thomas into helping me make a full length documentary. And when you say full length documentary, you're talking 80 minutes. So it's feature feature length documentary. Yeah, uh, it's sitting right at 80. <laughs> now, and, and Thomas, you uh, were a college student. It was your, was it your first year as a full time college student when this happened? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I've been connected to Gardner Webb my whole life uh, through somebody named Noel Manning. Uh, you know, <laughs> a few others at Gardner Webb, you know, Catherine Manning, who we've had on the show before, Beth Manning. <laughs> we're, we're kind of a Gardner Webb legacy. So growing up, <laughs> Growing up, I'd just been around campus my whole life, and then this was my first year as a full-time student when this happened um, back in the 2018 and 19 season. And um, I was also on the uh, ESPN Plus camera crew for those some of those games, so I was like deeply involved with the events all season long. Um, so it just was always going to hold a special place in my heart regardless. But then Christian approached me about this, and um, he's, it, one of his – like his first thing to reach out to me about was, hey, do you have any clips I can borrow? And so I had a few uh, you, videos that I shot uh, throughout those like two or three weeks. And I'm like, all right, here you go. And I, I thought that was going to be the extent of it. I didn't think it was going to blossom, blossom into much more. I didn't think that um, I would be able to contribute much more than that. But uh, 
the snowball kept building and uh here we are um like three and a half months after he sent me that first text and it was it was pretty crazy yesterday i sent him a text i was like all right so we're wrapped up production officially and it's just been just an incredible experience and i'm really grateful that christian would have me along uh i mean of course he's the mastermind behind it all but i think um I hope that my efforts have meant something to Christian because I've, I've worked hard on it. So. <laughs> and, and Christian, you're the director, the composer, the executive producer. I mean, talk a little bit about the, uh, the people involved. We want to mo- make sure we go ahead and give the names out there uh, before we get too deep into this. And then we'll let uh, Tim dive in with a question. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, I, I'm directing it and I wrote the music for it as well. So I'm the composer. Got Thomas here. He's also an executive producer. Um, first assistant director, and he also helps some in the writing stage. Um, and then we've also got Eli Harden. He's the second assistant director, and he was also a writer. Eli was really huge when it came to fact checking. Eli's a stats guy. Eli keeps up with all these news articles. And so I knew I could always count on him to come in behind me and say, hey, we need to include this stat. We need to include this quote. Um, and then we've got Brendan Boylan, another, another Gardner Webb graduate. He's also producing it, and he gave a ton of voice work for the documentary. You know, there were some scenes where we didn't quite have the original audio, and so he came in behind it and um, helped call some game shots. Um, He provides some much-needed commentary um, to kind of make sure the documentary moves along. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Tim, go ahead and dive in with a question, buddy. Well, you know, I was just wondering, I uh, think about, you know, my, my senior year of college, you know, I, we had, we did a documentary uh, when I was at App State and it took me five months, you know, just to do 20, 25 minutes. So Christian, talk about the, the, I, I know you've touched on a little bit, but the prep work, obviously I know there's a lot of prep, you know, teaching, broadcasting, I know the amount of editing time, but just the time for interviews, the time to, to kind of think about, as you talked about, it went from five minutes to 10 minutes to 20 minutes to, to an hour. Talk about your prep work for something like this. I don't think most people realize how much is involved with that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, I hate to say it, but I'm not sure when I first jumped into it, I realized how much was involved with it either, um, since I did think it would be a little five-minute thing. So it, a lot of pieces were happening at once. Um, we certainly started with scripting, and that was simultaneous to us finding footage, because if we couldn't find footage of it, then it couldn't make it into the doc. So I was finding footage and downloading that. I was writing a script kind of like in a rough outline phase. Um, and then once I had that first outline in place, purely based on the footage and the interviews I'd found online, that was when we kind of made the executive decision to, you know, let's really build this out into a documentary. And that's when we started interviewing others and setting up interviews. Um, Thomas, there's no telling how many people he interviewed. I was in on a couple of those, but I felt like every day for weeks and weeks, Thomas was interviewing someone. Um, We were just doing Zoom recordings, you know, one, uh, there's no benefits to the, the current virus going on, but everyone was at home over the summer. And so we had a lot of access to people, you know, the Big South commissioner, um, Chris Holtman, the former Gardner Webb head coach, who's at Ohio State now, um, Virginia's associate head coach, um, just a lot of people we might not have normally been able to interview, we were able to get in touch with and hold Zoom interviews with. Um, So once we'd gotten all the interviews in place, that's when we really did a deep dive, detailed script of building out exactly how we wanted to to make this story flow and you know then from there it was certainly just editing and editing and editing over and over again thomas dive in if you would about those interviews Mm -hmm. because you're right christian thomas uh, pretty much had interviews what seemed like almost every day uh, and night Uh, he was kind of fitting that in talk about uh, some of those interviews and some of the ones that maybe you were surprised that you were able to get maybe some of the ones you were surprised with the responses you got yeah, uh, so this kind of began back when we reached out to uh, Coach Kraft, Tim Kraft, and Coach Jeremy Luther, the associate head coach at Gardner Webb. And we thought we'd speak to them for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and get some quotes for our little featurette that we were putting together. But then we ended up speaking to both of them for like over an hour. And um, they seemed to be just so all in with everything we were doing that they provided us with a list of contact information for players from that team. Um, so we talked about like, like eight players from that March Madness team. Um, and then once we got all those done, we we're like, well, we're this far into it. Why not just take another step? 
Um, so Brendan Boylan was definitely a huge help in uh, some of these suggestions with some of the interviews. Um, you know, he had the idea to reach out to coach Chris Holtman, who is now, as Christian mentioned, the head coach at Ohio State University. And uh, he was the coach that preceded Tim Kraft at Gardner Webb um, back when uh, Kraft took over in the 2013 14 season, or I think at the end of that season. And uh, so he was, I'm just really thankful that Chris took the time for that. Um, you know, just a 10 minute Zoom interview, but uh, just that just kind of really goes to show. Um, how much he still appreciates and remembers his time at Gardner Webb. Um, that was really one of the stands out. Um, like Christian mentioned, uh, the Virginia associate head coach, uh, we, we were able to speak to him for about 15 or 20 minutes. He was extremely complimentary of Gardner Webb and the fight they put up in the NCAA tournament game against Virginia, who went on to win the national championship that year. Absolutely. Thanks, Thomas. Tim, go ahead and go in with your next question. Yeah, well, I was just going to ask, you know, obviously you talked about Tim Kraft and, you know, watching Garden Webb that season, you could really tell that this was a team that certainly had a chance. You know, I'd seen them years past. They got to the Big South Championship game and come up a little bit short. Remember a couple of years, but you just felt like this team uh, had a chance. You talked about Holtzman and then Kraft being an assistant under him and then taking over. But uh, I guess this question is for both Christian and Thomas. What did you learn about Coach Kraft? I know you knew him, but what did you learn about him as a coach during this documentary? Yeah, I think I probably learned the most about his emphasis on togetherness. That's his word that he uses all the time and in his interviews is togetherness. Um, and it's really interesting because, you know, the way we have the flow of the documentary, there's portions of the documentary where you see the team have awful losing streaks and you're like, this team could, couldn't go anywhere. Um, and it's because they weren't playing together and, and they outlined that pretty clearly. And then you see these huge winning streaks early in the season. We beat Wake Forest. We beat, yeah. uh, we beat Georgia Tech, you know, big name ACC schools we'd never beaten before. And it was because they stayed together. And so then when you watch the progression of the documentary, especially towards those those big games at the end, you see they started to play together. Well, this is probably the uh, the longest um, sneak peek at a documentary that we've given because we haven't given the name of it and we haven't even given the release date. So Christian, what is the name of the documentary that you are the director of? This documentary is called the dancing bulldogs. Okay. The, there you go. The dancing go. bulldogs and uh, the official release date that is going to be released on YouTube uh, directly and premiered. What's that date? It's October 16th and it'll be premiering at 7 PM. Okay. October 16th. So if you are uh, watching this past that date, uh, it is available now, and if you're watching this prior to, then it's not. So it depends <laughs> on which time zone you are in. And we'll we'll talk more about about this documentary, The Dancing Bulldogs, uh, 16 Seeds uh, Journey, Journey to the NCAA Tournament. There you go. That's that's the the subtitle for that. Uh, Christian Jessup, Thomas Manning, both uh, heavily involved in in this documentary. Tim Foster uh, joining us and uh, diving in with some good questions. We we'll be back right here on. Meet me at the movies uh, right after this quick intermission. Thanks for joining us. They're going to put me in the movies. They're going to make a big star out of me. Want change? Like things the way they are? Use your rights and vote. Take a stand for your beliefs. Why wouldn't you vote? Don't make excuses. It's not every day you can take a stand on community, state, and national issues. Think your vote won't change anything? In 2008, only 3,632 votes separated the presidential race and the state of Missouri. 3,632. Every vote counts. Speak up. Only you can silence your voice. Go to your local polling place and be heard on this election day. I would tell anybody that's interested in getting broadcasting that, um, this is a really exciting field to be in. The possibilities are endless. And every day is different. Um, there's always something new. Um, you're always on your toes. It's, I think the good thing about you know a school like Cleveland Community College is they're really good at keeping up with the latest technologies. My experience um, with the broadcasting program has been everything and more. I've hosted a television show here. I've done radio shows. I've, I've made my own commercials, all kinds of exciting things, digital animation. And I've never thought I'd have a career in news that I enjoy. It's just really exciting to, you know, have a career where you're in control of what two million people in the area are watching every night. It's really exciting and enriching and fulfilling work. It doesn't feel like a job. I mean, I get to 
hang around all day and make television. I mean, just listen to that. Now the question is, are you ready to start your journey today? Welcome back to this uh, special. Hey, I've never got to do this before. Coming back from break, special meet me at the uh, movies as we're talking about the uh, a great documentary, kind of looking at Gardner Webb's run to the NCAA tournament and Christian Jessup, Thomas Manning, and Fortune Old Team Manning. Christian, remind us again, and I do know now they went undefeated at home that year uh, as well. But remind me, thank goodness, I'm going to watch the documentary. Remind us of the name of the documentary, guys. Documentary is called The Dancing Bulldogs, subtitles, The 16 Seeds Journey to the NCAA Tournament. And of course, October 16th is a premiere, whether you, if you watch this before, obviously if it's after, it's already uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm just waiting for Netflix and Hulu, right? It's going to be there <laughs> eventually, right? <laughs> um, a question I've got, guys, to kind of kick into this second uh, segment. I remember watching, let's talk about the game itself. You know, you had Virginia, who had the year before, obviously, had been knocked out for the first time ever by a 16th seed, what, Baltimore, Maryland, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the amazing thing for me watching that game, and I could be wrong because I've been off already on a few things, but it seemed <laughs> like, at least if not close, it seemed like their biggest deficit, talking about Virginia, that whole tournament that they won was to Garden Weber, at least it was one of the biggest mm -hmm. But watching that first half, and all of a sudden, I don't know, Christian and Thomas and Noah, if you kind of got the same thoughts, but I'm thinking, could this happen again? Could this miracle happen? What do you remember about that first half, guys? Yeah. Um, I, I, there's even a quote in the documentary from, uh, I believe it's Jim Nance, who says, what do you think? Can lightning strike twice? And, <laughs> and I think that's everyone's feeling. You're right. The 14-point the lead Gardner-Webb had in that first half was the largest deficit Virginia faced. I think the entire season, let alone yeah. the tournament. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've told the story a few times. I was already working in Raleigh and the tournament was like during the work day. I think it was like 2.30 mm -hmm. or 3. Um, and so I convinced my boss to let us turn on the game on all the like office TVs. And so we're just all sitting there working. And then just my whole office would erupt every time we would score. And so you're just watching the, watching the game just thinking like, what's going on? Like nobody expected this. Um, Thomas, you were you were at the game, right? Oh yeah, I was up there in the student section and uh, I think Noel was down there on the floor, but, uh, and we were kind of texting and chatting back and forth during the game, but the energy in that student section was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. We basically had two student sections. We had one in the lower levels and I was on the one uh, closer to the top. And um, it was, it really did feel like a home game for Gardner-Webb. Um, and I think the rest of the crowd uh, was rooting for the underdogs as well. Even those fans, they had no affiliation with either of the teams. They just wanted to see a little old Gardner Webb uh, take down Goliath again. I mean, like, like we mentioned, we had seen it happen the year before. Um, and it really felt like it was going like that in that direction again. Um, we were flat out nominating them in the first half. And uh, I will just never forget some of those moments, um, you know, where we, take the 14 point lead. I remember we, Jose Perez hits a three to give us a 10 point lead, like 20 to 10. That was our first double digit lead at that point. Um, just just some some of those things just send a chill through my body just thinking back to him right now. Yeah, and, and I'll chime in on this, Tim. I, I was there on the floor um, working as part of the Gardner Web team. And um, I was also there with the CBS crew who I had been with the whole week before. And they were kind of covering, you know, leading up to it. They were following a couple of students and they were really trying to get a student's perspective of what it's like to be that 16th seed and be a fan. But what happened was as Gardner Webb started taking that lead, I started getting text from the producer and he was like, okay, man, the, the dynamic of this is starting to change. There may, there may be some things that are changing on this. And so he came down and talked to me when we were, when we got up by 14 and he said, 
He said, I just want to let you know, we might have to do some things completely different. I might have to, to, to get some, get on the floor and get some floor shots and stuff. And so he made some adjustments, but everybody was feeling like this might just happen. And the atmosphere was completely electric. And we had, it, it was wonderful being just a couple of hours down the road. So you could have a really strong fan base and even Virginia's coach uh, after the game uh, during the press conference talked about it. And uh, the assistant coach you guys got a chance to talk to said the same thing that, uh, you know, everybody from Boiling Springs must have must have gone there and then some. Uh, it was it was quite amazing to be a part of it. And even though we came out on the losing end of it, uh, it's something that we'll never forget because we didn't get it wasn't a huge blowout. Uh, people were talking about us. And uh, if you, you know, go back and look at Twitter, what was trending uh, relating to, to March Madness, we were there. We were there. Yeah, I just remember the, yeah, I just remember the, you know, the, you talk about the national coverage. I remember obviously CBS and the, and the kind of the, the special they did. I remember when they were there at, at the university during the, the announcement. And then, of course, being on campus that week and then, you know, you get on, you know, a lot of 16 seeds, as you guys know, they're gone within the first six minutes of the game and their very first appearance in a, in an NCAA tournament game. And for the, not only to be leading they were, the way that they were and play the way they did, they did. And the reality is they would have been a lot of good teams that day. And yeah, then yeah. I just think about, think about both coaches, Bennett and Kraft, class coaches. And then I go on to think about Thomas and Christian, you know, kind of moving it over to Virginia a little bit, how they won that tournament. Remember all those games, including hitting a couple of buzzer beaters to get into overtimes. You know, it was just fascinating, and it kind of started with the Virginia Garden Web game, so it was really neat. Yeah, and it was good to be able to look back once they got to the national championship, and, and it seemed like every time Virginia would win a game, they kept going back and mentioning Gardner Webb. So the Gardner Webb name continued to be mentioned even at the national championship. Uh, that was pretty amazing. Um, you know, Christian Thomas, both you guys went back and found some amazing footage, footage that's never been seen. Uh, you had to do a lot of work to find all of that, uh, including tracking down footage from uh, from TV stations and uh, and their folks as well. Talk a little bit about that process and uh, the challenges that you had to overcome for that. And either one of you that wants to jump in. Uh, yeah, um, a huge help for us was uh, connecting with some of the uh, guys over at Garden Web Sports Information. Uh, Ryan Bridges was a really, really big help um, with finding archive footage for us. Uh, archive footage that was from Eric Mangum, who um, is no longer at Gardner Webb, but was during that time. And he was uh, basically the uh, director of new media, I believe was his role. And uh, they just had like massive hard drives of hours upon hours of footage that Christian had to work through. But, um, you know, Christian, phenomenal editing on your part. And um, just, uh, it was really awesome to see so many different perspectives um, that we hadn't really seen before. And that was really just a blessing figuring out a way to work those things in the documentary. Uh, Cause we, up to that point, we were just relying on footage that we could find somewhere on YouTube or on news stations. But with this, this really kind of opened up and broadened what we could do and how much we could show. Yeah, it's it's funny, you know, like Thomas said, we were pulling footage from YouTube, from, from news stations. And it, it did work out well that Gardner Webb made such a name for themselves in the tournament because, you know, footage that probably would have disappeared overnight if we hadn't done well is still archived, is still very easy to find. And so that that was really great to be able to pull all of that. And it's it's funny because I think we were two or three days from announcing a early September release date. Um, we were feeling good about all the footage we found. We had our interviews and we we're like, all right, we're, we're going to release this like first weekend in September. And then like, like Thomas said, Ryan Bridges emails us and he says, hey, I've got about 150 gigabytes of never before seen footage. It's not on YouTube. It's never been shown at Gardner Webb. Wow. And he was like, would you guys want it? And of course we said yes, but I was like, hey, Thomas, I think I'm gonna need to change that release date. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a huge help from Gardner Webb. It was so cool to see, you know, the documentary, I, I was loving how it was coming together, but that was a, that was a game changer in terms of the, the angles and the shots we were able to include some of the the quotes that were in that footage that we never thought we'd ever find it, it was really cool wow, wow. Tim, tim tim, tim uh, i'll let you go for another question i think we've got time for one more 
Yeah, I, I was just going to piggyback on the editing aspect. You, you know, when you do a documentary and, and uh, you know, one of the things you, and I think you already probably had it, Christian and Thomas too, but you learn patience tremendously. But sometimes a, a documentary is just meant to be and it sounds like that last minute footage uh, or, or the footage that came in and that I'm sure that's added a lot to it. And I'm just excited to see what you, uh, both of you guys are, are very talented. So I'm excited to see what, what will come out of that. And I just, that whole experience was just remarkable. I just think again about how the community came around and, and supported and uh, and I'm excited to, to kind of see all the elements of the documentary. But yeah, editing, editing can be a lot of fun, Christian, as you know. Oh yeah. And, and like you said, it was ever changing, ever evolving. You, you uncover something that replaces something else. And then we, we had the added dynamic of Zoom being unreliable, you know, like yeah. if a person had a great quote and their voice cut out halfway through, you know, we either had to do some movie magic and splice it together or the, the quote couldn't go in. <laughs> I do have, I have one more very quick question. What about, a, is there a music score? Are you involved in that? And, and I had a feeling you might've had something to do with that. I don't know if we have time for this question. But. I can give a quick answer. Yes, there's a music score. I composed it. I performed it. It's all the music's me on there. Yeah, awesome. Oscar worthy, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it is available on. Is it available on uh, Spotify and iTunes as well? It will be on release date on October 16th. You'll be able to stream it wherever you get your streaming music. Uh, the documentary is called The Dance and Bulldogs. It does cover the entire season of uh, the uh, Gardner Webb Brennan Bulldogs uh, 16 seeds journey to the NCAA tournament covers the 2018 2019 season and uh, Tim it does capture community without a doubt I'm sure um, that yeah. is something that you really get a sense for yeah uh, within this. yeah it does oh, so any final thoughts or comments Christian Thomas you want to make sure you share before we wrap up uh, I'll just say sco dogs uh, always got to throw that in there <laughs> and uh, we appreciate all the support that we've had a lot of people already that are just so enthusiastic about this. And uh, we really are appreciative of it. And uh, I'm just really proud of our entire crew, Christian, uh, Eli Harden and Brendan Boylan. All of them have just been fantastic in their respective roles. So it's been, it's been an awesome time. Yeah. Yep. I'm excited to share it. I'm so proud of it. And I hope people watching it will be proud of Gardner Webb and, and what they accomplished by reliving those moments. And I think they will, Tim. It, it does remind me of uh, when Creston Burns won the oh, yeah. state championship in football, and there was a, a video called 16 Weeks of Glory yeah. that yeah. we put out that covered both of those teams throughout their entire season, and this one does the same thing. And uh, anybody that was around uh, Cleveland County during that time and has any kind of connect, or anybody has a connection to Gardner-Webb uh, at all in, in one way or another, I think will appreciate what Christian – Thomas and the rest of the crew uh, have pulled together. Uh, amazing documentary, uh, and this comes from somebody who loves documentaries and uh, highly recommend it. Uh, the Dancing Bulldogs, uh, it is available October 16th. And if you're watching this beyond that date, hey, you're lucky. If you're watching this before, then you got to wait around a little while <laughs> and uh, check it out. Uh, what, what's the, uh, have you got a, a, a website or how do they find it? Yeah, so if you want to go to our website, it's dancingbulldogsmovie.weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, dot com. Um, and make sure you don't have the G in there. We found with, with Google searching that adding the G will get you videos of bulldogs that are dancing. But if you remove the G and leave it at dancing, then you'll be, you'll be set. You'll find all our information. And you can also find it on IMDB uh, and find out some more information about it there as well. Christian Jessup. Thomas Manning joining us to talk about the movie, a documentary, The Dancing Bulldogs, uh, a 16 seeds journey to the NCAA tournament. Tim Foster, thanks for uh, hanging out with us and asking some questions, man. Really appreciate it. Hey, it's great to be a part of it. I'm looking forward to seeing the documentary. Appreciate y'all joining us as always, however you decide to spend time with us uh, right here on Meet Me at the Movies for C19 TV. That's a wrap. Happy trails to